Faith is a gift of God given unto each of us according to God's good pleasure, according to his desire. I want to talk about that today as we continue discussing faith and the impacts of faith in our lives. Today, Romans chapter 12, Romans 12 and 3. It's our scripture reading from the King James Version. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Romans 12 and 3. Grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of God stands forever and ever and ever. In Romans 12 and 3, the Apostle Paul addresses this important issue of humility and sober judgment in faith. He is pointing out that believers should not overestimate themselves or assume that they possess more significance or worth than anyone else. Instead, each person should view himself according to the lens of humility, recognizing that their abilities, their gifts, their talents, and faith are all given by God. And so there's a call <clears throat> for every believer to avoid pride and egotism, to acknowledge that everything that we have is given unto us by the measure of God's grace in our lives. In this context, the measure of faith implies that God has granted each believer a unique portion of faith, empowering them to contribute to the body of Christ without compromise or without competition. And so therefore, the playing field has been leveled. God has created us not to complete, not to compete, but to complete, and that we should not in any way compare ourselves to any other for any purpose of reason or reason whatsoever. And so this verse is pointing out that faith itself is a gift, a gift given by God, proportioned by God's grace according to his will and purpose for each individual. Paul's advice is fundamental and foundational for a creating for creating a community of unity, humility, and independence. Each person brings their own God-given strengths without overestimating their place or their position in the kingdom of God. And so there are a few key points. First of all, there must be there must be humility and faith. Paul is urging believers not to think more highly of themselves than they should. This is this is this is required. This is required for having self awareness. It is required that we have self awareness. It is required that we recognize both strengths and weaknesses and embrace them. And viewing oneself as a part of a larger community, having a part of a role, but not being the sole provider of every gift and every purpose. No one can do everything, but we all have been given something to the glory of God, maybe more than others, but all have been equipped and given, given something by the power of God. But he says that we should think on this gift soberly, having sober judgment, sober judgment, meaning to think soberly. Speaks of speaking, thinking accurately, balanced, having a well view of self, oneself being focused on your gifts, but as well being focused on your limitations. This prevents pride and encourages individuals to appreciate their place within God's plan. But then he spoke of the measure of faith, and, and this measure of faith is given to each believer. It is a level that is given as a gift, a level of faith that is given by God as a gift unto every believer. And it is unique to their journey and purpose. And so this calls for respect for the various gifts that have been given and the various callings that have been given and the various levels of faith that have been given within the body of Christ. He measures out according to what he desires for us to accomplish. And as well, when he sees and recognizes, we have the ability of handling. He's never going to give us more than we can handle or put more on us than we're able to bear. And so there are a few applications that we see in these verses. 
First of all, the apostle is encouraging us to do some self-reflection. This is encouraging regular self-evaluation where we, we assess our strengths and our weaknesses and seek God's guidance for growth rather than exalting our own achievements. And listen, if we're not perfecting and polishing and practicing any gift that we have eventually is going to diminish and wane. And even over the course of time, we get to the point that we no longer have the same strength that we once had or the same ability that we once possessed. Even the greatest come to the realization that the time that was is not anymore. We have to recognize our limit, limited shelf life, our ability to perform at high standards and high capacities. There has to be self-reflection. Every once in a while, we need to evaluate where we are and what we can do for the kingdom of God. Then he speaks of community building, promoting unity by valuing each member and each member's unique contributions and gifts. God has blessed everyone with something. When we do this, we foster an environment where each person's role is celebrated rather than compared. And this is a challenge that we have within the body of Christ and the church of Christ is that we are so inclined to compare who does better than others or who can give more than others. That is not the focus that God wants us to have. Then he also speaks of gratitude for God's provisions. And this recognizes that any measure of faith and ability comes from God and God alone. We can foster gratitude and reliance on his grace rather than personal pride. We must be thankful for what God is doing and grateful for how God is using us in his divine plan. The example that is speaking of is the imagery of a sports team where every player understands their position and their role. No one player is more important than the other. Each player has a value and a role in the team's success. This humility and self-awareness creates harmony, creates strength and unity as each player respects the skills and the abilities of the other teammates without compromising or boasting. Similarly, Paul is urging the church to operate like a well-coordinated team, valuing each person's position and each person's authority, each person's measure of faith to build up the community. Every person has to know their role and their responsibility and not usurp themselves into the role of someone else. This approach focuses on how God gives each believer a unique measure of faith intended to promote unity, to promote service, and as well, oneness within the church of God. And so Romans 12 and 3 provides a framework for humility that is rooted in grace, not merely self-discipline. And so Paul recognizes by stating that his instruction comes to grace given to him. And this is significant because it reflects a deep understanding that any authority or any insight he has is not self-derived, but a gift given from God. This perspective of grace shifts the focus from self-centeredness to God-centeredness, making it clear that spiritual gifts and faith are entrusted to us, not as grounds for boasting, but as opportunities for service unto the Lord. And so Paul's admonition here has countercultural, has a countercultural message as a society uh, often encourages self-promotion and comparison by instructing believers to think soberly. Paul is saying, that there should be a radical departure from worldly values and that we should focus not on our own importance, but on the importance of others and the abilities of others. So we thinking in this context is a call to spiritual maturity, being grounded, being realistic, having a realistic view that recognizes our total dependence upon God. Then again, this measure of faith, the measure of faith that is spoken of here is critical to understand 
it is important that we focus on what this measure of faith really speaks of. The phrase indicates that God distributes faith uniquely to each and every one of us. It implies that it's a gift, and no two believers have the same gift of faith or the identical journeys in faith, but each has what God has given unto them to fulfill God's purpose. And so rather than comparing ourselves to anyone else or comparing our gifts to anyone else or comparing our journeys to anyone else, each believer is encouraged to recognize what God is doing in their lives and to recognize the measure that has been given unto them and to carefully and intentionally understand that it has been crafted by God, that God's plan was performed in our lives and he gave unto us what he intended for us to have for our lives to be made made better. And so this measure isn't a sign of one person's superiority or another. Instead, it reflects the diversity that is seen within the body of Christ, where everyone has a role that has been tailor-made by God, that has been given according to God's plan. It's in particular in practical terms, it has been give, given according to the measure of God, particularly for his desire and his will for the lives of his people. And so this means that believers should focus on their own God-given calling and resist the temptation to envy or to judge others based on different gifts or levels of faith. And so how does this verse relate and shape the Christian's relationships? First of all, or finally, I should say, <laughs> in Romans 12 and 3, it has implications for how Christians should interact with one another. When believers view themselves with sober judgment, they are less likely to become prideful or dismissive of others. This mindset promotes a healthy community where every person's gifts and contributions are valued regardless of their perceived status or influence by understanding that every person has been given a unique measure of faith. We can appreciate and honor each other's differences. And this humility and mutual respect created within us provides an environment where collaboration and service can thrive as each member sees themselves as a part of a larger God-ordained purpose that God has put together for his divine plan. And so here's our takeaway. We should foster humility through gratitude. Practicing gratitude can reinforce the humility that Paul calls for, recognizing every gift, every strength, and every accomplishment is ordained by God. It comes from God rather than personal merit and personal abilities. It is given by God, and we should have a heart of gratitude and humility for the favor that God has exhibited in our life. Then we are to serve without comparison. Whether it's in ministry or in personal life, we should avoid the tendency to compare your faith journey or your accomplishments with those uh, or with anyone else. Instead, focus on serving God faithfully in the ways he has equipped you, recognizing that your unique role is essential to the community. And then finally, build each other's faith. Encourage each other in the uniqueness of the gift that God has given and the calling that God has placed on each individual person. Rather than competing, help others to be complete. Help to develop their measure of faith by offering encouragement, support, and celebrating the strength and directing them according to the will and the plan of God. This approach fosters unity and helps us to grow without envy and without pride. Do we consider a garden and the uniqueness of a garden and the way a garden grows and the various plants that are within the garden? Some bloom brightly in the spring, while others uh, root in the summer and the fall or the fall, rather, and they bloom at a later time. The same thing within the body of Christ. Each plant, each person 
is uniquely balanced and made beautiful and has a purpose, contributing to the variety of the beauty and the diversity of the garden. So the measure of faith that God has given us, he has given it so that it develops, so that it flourishes, so that it blossoms or becomes beautified at different times so that we all can can shine and we all can be a part of his plan and a part of his purpose. We must acknowledge the diversity that God has created and accept what God is doing and how God is moving to be a part of his more expressive plan of grace and mercy in the lives of all people. And so Romans 12 and 3 invites us to a life where we we find confidence not in our abilities, but in the grace of God. And this, this perspective frees us from the bondage of pride, competition, or self-deception, um, allowing us to embrace the beauty of God's design in every individual life. It is an invitation for us to see ourselves according to the lens of humility, gratitude, and faith. And each person should be cherished and each role should be valued for the measure of faith that God has given and the measure of gifts and courage that God has given, recognizing that it is, again, a gift given by God, not something that we have acquired on our own, but it was given, and we should embrace it according to God's will. Thank God for this word today. I pray that it is a blessing unto you and that it is a blessing unto others as it has been a blessing unto me. Recognize that the gifts that God has given us, he's given them for a purpose, for a reason, and that he is up to something in all of our lives. Let's Let's go to God in prayer. God, thank you for your word and thank you for the gifts and the blessings that you provided for us, the wonderful things that you've done for us, how you have poured into each of us according to the measure of faith that you've given us. Thank you for what you're doing, how you're moving, how you're blessing, and how you're sustaining. Continue to work your perfect will and your divine plan in our lives. Continue to make us a vessel that can be utilized according to your purposes and your divine will have your way within each and every one of us. We pray blessings upon our day and divine favor upon all that we do. We pray that you would keep us and that you would utilize us, that you would use us as an instrument of praise and as well as a vessel that can be can that can pour into the lives of others, that can be poured into and that can pour into the lives of us of others bless us and direct us according to your will and according to your divine plan we come today praying for our children as they're preparing for this week we pray blessings upon them we pray for educators administrators and teachers pray for pastors and churches praying for first responders healthcare workers praying for civil leaders and authority praying for social workers and praying for people everywhere that grace may abound in the lives of your people according to your will and your divine plan. Praying for our world to be a better place, praying for peace in the land, for oneness, for unity, and for blessings. Praying for healing for various conditions and all of those who are battling with various ailments. We pray God blessings upon them. Lifting up Steve today, praying for Steve Walker, blessings for Steve Walker, healing and deliverance. I pray God that you once again bring him through the challenges and difficulties, the hurdles that he must climb. I pray that you'll give him strength and courage. We continue to pray for Miss Betty Sims for blessings, for healing, and for a covering according to your plan. Praying for Coach Jessica Rich and her family. Continue blessings and favor. Lifting up Van Drummond, Greta, and Eric. Praying for John Paul, John Powell, and Susie. Lifting up Veronica, Ben, Jake, and Violet Foster. Blessings for the entire family. Lifting up Yandy Kyle's blessings for miracles and blessings for Yandi, praying for Stan and Tony Polk, asking for special favor upon their lives. And God, I'm praying that you'll work miracles and continue to bless them, provide for their every need, and as well give them the desires of their heart. Pray for Marvin and Shirley Rosen, continue to bless them, lifting up Hal, blessings for Hal, praying for Relina and praying for healing for 
her son, continued blessings and favor. Lift up Reverend Sam Proctor. I appreciate it. I pray blessings upon him. And God, I appreciate the fact that you have touched him so well and graciously anointed him. I pray that you'll continue to be with him and bless him. Allow the mantle to fall on him in the precious name of Jesus the Christ. We're praying for Jane LeBlue, Terry and Lisa. We're praying for Ken, lifting up Betty Sims, Stan and Renee. Uh, again, praying for that entire Sims family. Praying for Cheryl Grant, Pastor A.C. Stapleton, Pastor Donald Parson, Pastor A.J. Johnson, Pastor Luther Williams. Praying for Pastor Teal Barrett, Pastor Al Sampson. Praying for Pastor Eshawn Williams. Praying for his wife. Praying for his dad. Lifting up that entire family. Continue to pray for Pastor Kevin Workman and his family. Praying for um, Pastor Pastor Sam, blessings for Pastor Sam's and pray for you continue to touch his body and heal him and bless him. Praying for Pastor Daryl Horton, Pastor um, and Sister Eddie Brown, and Sister King, Pastor Fabian Jacko, um, Pastor Aaron Reynolds, lifting up Pastor uh, Trent Williams and as well. Pastor William McKinley Jackson, these men that God you've placed on my heart, I pray blessings upon them in favor, covering according to your will and plan. Pastor William Jordan, blessings in favor in the name of Jesus the Christ. Praying for Sylvester Sampson, continued blessing. Praying for Deacon and Sister Jackson, lifting up the Cartwright family, Ronald and Yvonne, Dorothy Smith. Pray blessings and healing upon her. Praying for Roy Williams and his entire family. Anthony Johnson, to our family, uh, praying for Visions of Hope Ministries in Dallas, Texas. And thank you for the opportunity to serve and pray blessings upon every endeavor in the name of Jesus the Christ. Praying for families everywhere, lifting up the Ryans, the Armstrong, the Braggs, the Coxies, the Johnson, the Noble, the Armstrong, um, Braggs, Coxies, Johnsons, Noble, Rock, Sims, Howard, Calhoun, LeBlu, Sposito, Walker family, praying for Cassandra and Joseph Igana, praying for Shannon, continued blessings, lifting up Cynthia Garrett, praying for her family, praying that you would move and touch, praying for Ife Eicher, Dion Ramos, Elsie Eberhardt, Kathy and Pete, praying for Doris Harris, Shirley Bright, lifting up Linda Bird, Sandra Thornton, Mother Rock, Sammy Barrett, Rahul Musafa, Derek Stringley, Kenneth Fabian, India Matt, Calvin Teterton, Denise Steve Fairley, Darius Timmons, lifting up Terry Hornsby, Wendy Doty, praying blessings upon each and every one that is a part of our prayer list. Praying for Marvin, continued blessings for Marvin and Hal, and lifting up Ann, praying for Bill, praying for, um, again, praying for Violet uh, Foster, and just praying for the entire family, praying for it. Um, Jake, praying for Maria. Praying, God, that you will continue to hear and answer prayer, and that you'll bless all that are on our prayer list, lifting them up unto you, knowing that you're able to do anything but fail. Praying for my family. Praying for Nicolette, Irvin, and Nadia. Continue favor and blessings, traveling mercies, and favor in the name of Jesus the Christ. Keep us, protect us, and watch over us in Jesus' precious name. We ask as well that you make us great for this day and make the day great for us. Prepare us for what you have in store for us. Equip us for the journey and keep your hand upon us is our sincere prayer. prayer. Please bless us abundantly. If you do these things, we'll be careful to give you praise, glory, and honor now and forever and evermore. To the matchless name of Jesus, the Christ, we pray. Amen and thank God. Blessings to you. Thank you so much for your patience today. I've been exceptionally long today, but I thank you for sticking with us if you were able to make it to the end. Blessings to you. I pray that you have a fantastic Monday, that God blesses you abundantly and utilizes you in his plan and purpose and does great things in your life. Please pour into someone today by sharing with them the word of God. Pray for someone today. Pray for me as I am praying for you. Let's pray for one another. And may God bless and keep you is my sincere and earnest prayer. May you find favor in all that you do. May God bless you abundantly. And may he continue to strengthen you in and through every endeavor. Please know nothing's going to happen to you today that God has not equipped you and prepared you to handle. He's given you every tool and every resource that you need for success and favor. So trust God, believe God, have faith in God, know that God is very much in control. 
Be blessed. Have a great day. God be with you is my prayer. Pastor Irvin and Baron saying, have a wonderful day.